Hi, I'm Adora Seacock, curator of TEDx Redmond. It's an independently organized uh, TED event for youth by youth. TEDx stands for Consent Awareness Event. TED, as you all know, I'm sure, is the prestigious nonprofit and annual conference taking place in California and around the globe every year. If you need more information, just feel free to check out TED.com. The link's in over there. So I'm here with my mom, George Seacock, and if you're wondering why I randomly dragged my mom into the TEDx Redmond video, it's because my mom uh, has been a really integral part of the process. You know, we're by youth for youth, but that doesn't mean that we don't receive a lot of social support, obviously. That's where our money is coming from. Uh, not too much money so far, but obviously if you're interested in sponsoring, go to TEDxRedmond.com and you can get in touch with us. But enough of me. Um, not putting just about you, but enough about TEDx Redmond. Putting in a pitch for... Sponsorship. The reason I have my mom here is uh, not only to thank her for her integral role in making TEDx a success, that is calling up all the people we're afraid to, asking them for money, but also for the fact that she's let us lose the house rent free to have 16 teenagers overrun the basement with a giant meeting about all things TEDx Redmond. So thanks. And now for some questions. So for parents who are wondering why should I send my kid to this conference? Uh, what would you say? What are the benefits of sending your kids to TEDx Redmond? So you don't have to lecture them about they should grow up and do good things for society? Well, isn't it even about more than growing up, though? I mean, do you think it's about... That's correct. It's starting from now. You don't have to wait until you grow up to do good things. You can do great things at this moment. Very aptly said. Uh, so you've heard it really from a parent's point of view. Um, but what if there are some parents who still aren't entirely convinced, who are saying, well, you know, this is great for this small, select group of child prodigies and these, you know, wonder kinds that we've gotten to attend this conference and speak, but the average kid is going to school uh, five days a week and is busy with homework and is busy with extracurricular activities and probably doesn't have time to go play at Carnegie Hall or go save the world. What would you say to the parents who are a little bit not sure of the practical uses of what you might hear at TEDx Redmond? Well, the inspiration part of it, I think, is very inspiring when they get to use their words twice. And also well, motivate them to study in their own classroom or just uh, at their own spare time. It's not just about being, you know, uh, it's not about prodigy, it's not about people who have, ex you know, extreme talent. It is for everybody, and also the quality time that you can spend with your child on Saturday. Okay, quality time to spend with your kid, it's all about inspiration. And what's more, the theme this year is uh, a really all-encompassing one. So our last year's most powered students really, um, okay, militant isn't the right word, but very, I guess, revolutionary to the extent that we had parents in a separate room, we had just kids getting the best uh, that, you know, our venue could offer. It was, I think that the whole idea of power to the students was really, it was a bunch of kids running around, being in charge. And this year we have a uh, slightly different approach, while it's still very much youth-centered, we're bringing the parents and kids together, and the theme this year is the spark in all of us. And all of us doesn't mean just if you happen to grow up in a very, um, you know, powerful area. I don't know what this means exactly, powerful area. Okay, so if you have all the opportunities in the world, affluent, you don't necessarily have to be affluent, you don't necessarily have to have tons of opportunities. You could be just one of the, you know, average kids that we were talking about um, who, who goes to school every day and leads what you might think is a fairly normal life. Well, everyone has a spark inside them, and no, we're not talking about anything having to do with teenage arsonists, which is broader people of concern. We were talking about our theme, spark in all of us is just everyone's potential. We could have said, you know, everyone's potential, but that sounds a bit cliche. And uh, the spark can turn into a flame and maybe just a fire. And if I go into this consuming the world, it will really sound kind of um, destructive. But I guess the whole point of this fire spark theme was that you can take your spark and turn it into something meaningful that will help others. Uh, whether that's through science, art, math, uh, the performing arts, I uh, mentioned art too, but arts, the arts are a big part of our program this year. Uh, really, the, the City of Redmond Arts Commission 
uh, we've been talking with them as to potential ways that we can get involved. So arts is a really integral part. And a lot of times we hear uh, ways people are helping the world through nonprofit work. So we have a lot of students who have founded nonprofits or have donated great deals of money, who have done fundraising. We also have people who have uh, done seemingly simple things like um, researching for a history context that they have revealed so much more. Um, people who are involved in athletics, we have a championship sailor, we have a nine-year-old pianist. So we really have kids coming from all areas who in many ways are typical kids just like you, or I should say you, because kids with you, I guess are under 10 years old, and our age, uh, I guess our audience is approximately like 10 to 18. Um, obviously, if you are an 8-year-old who is like crazy about youth events, be sure to come. Um, the age thing is not a limit, it's not a boundary, it's more of a guideline as far as, okay, this is who it's aimed at, but you know, when I was 7, I published my first book, so... There's always exceptions to be made, and um, yeah. So if you're a uh, if, you're, if you're a seven year old, then yeah, go for it. So I have uh, a couple of more questions for you, just from this parent point of view, because I think this is an important part of TEDx Juggling. You attended TEDx Juggling last year, and you had the chance to see the speeches, albeit from a final classroom where we shuttled all the adults off to. I think she managed to sneak backstage and to help us with uh, backstage emergencies. So this year you're going to be able to actually sit in the main theater, witness the speeches happening before you live. So what were some of the things that you learned last year from watching the speeches and what are some of the things that you think you learned this year? Well, last year I learned so many things from each speaker. Even though they are under 18, the quality of the speech is as good as a lot of adult speakers that I have listened to, if not better. And also, I was very um, impressed by how well they put together their presentation. So this year, I'm hoping for the similar experience. And uh, after watching the meetings you guys conducted, I'm very confident this year um, it's going to be as good as a lot better than last year. Okay. So I know that you probably are not supposed to pick favorites, but if you could recommend, or I mean, I know obviously you recommend all the talks, but if you just had you know, one or two that really stick out in your mind that you could say uh, maybe the message was like most inspirational or something that just sticks out in your mind to you from last year. If there's one talk that people should just check out right after watching this video, what would be the first thing? Well, I really enjoyed Simone Porter. She is both a very articulate speaker and also a great performer. And also I love um, the game of music. Um, all of order, and we talked about music is going to play the cello. So I, I really enjoyed this too. You know, everybody else was just fabulous. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with TEDx. I mean, is it is really impossible to pick favorites for me as a curator. Obviously, everyone's near and dear to me because, um, you know, if they weren't, then I haven't done a proper job as a curator. Obviously, it's not a little biased. Um, you know, I, I uh, would pick anyone who I wasn't feeling uh, fond of their message. But obviously, Music is really an excellent way that we at TEDx are going to want to reach out to our audience. We're not just your typical, you know, series of lectures about one thing. And that's the lovely thing about TED is, even though it started out as gaming for technology, entertainment, and design, bringing those three worlds together, it's really spread out to everything from education to uh, science to philosophy. So in many ways, TED now really stands for every single letter of the alphabet. Uh, Ted's message is now ideas worth spreading, as opposed to just those three words, technology, entertainment, and design. And we really reflect that in our conference and the diversity of backgrounds from where our speakers come from. So I'm going to wrap it up with that. Uh, to make sure if you want a TEDx Redmond sampler, go to tedxredmond.com slash tedxredmond2010. You can click the link right up there. <laughs> I've got a finger pointing it to have it up there. Okay. <laughs> um, and you'll be able to watch all the videos from last year to your heart's delight. Simone Porter and Oliver Eldor are my mom's top recommendations for you to watch first. They're both amazing musicians, and other ones you can find about um, business, nonprofits, every sector of society or interest you have. So go check out the videos. Sign up to attend TEDx Redmond if you're in this area at tedxredmond.com slash register. And make sure you have a great time thinking about the sparking.